the welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Y'all been wanting my recipe for my coleslaw. And I tell y'all, Miss Lori's <laughs> coleslaw is just plain Jane coleslaw, but it's the way we like it. Now, a while back, I done a, a video on making Dolly Parton's coleslaw, and it is really delicious. Uh, but I still go back to my simple, old, regular recipe for my coleslaw that we eat with. It doesn't matter if it's barbecue or if it's just a pot of beans or something. It's just simple, simple ingredients, and just the way we like it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my dressing. And I can tell you that when I make coleslaw, I don't always put the same amount of dressing in or mayonnaise. or, or It's just, I just throw stuff together. So... But I'll try to do my best to give you measurements. But we're just going to do about a cup of mayonnaise. I've got a half of a medium head of cabbage that I cut up. And I like my coleslaw, my cabbage cut up, um, not real fine, not like Kentucky Fried Chicken's coleslaw, but uh, just in smaller pieces. I don't like it in real long stringy pieces. So I just kind of take my butcher knife, and you can use a, you can shred it in your food processor or a hand grater, any way you want to. But I just use my, my knife, and I just kind of cut it up thin, but I do shred my carrots. I do use my, uh, and shred it up pretty good. So I'm going to take out about a cup of mayonnaise. I made a mess. I'll have to clean that off here in a minute. And I've got some milk here, but I never really know how much I need. So I'm just going to put a couple tablespoons of milk. You can even use buttermilk. If I've got buttermilk handy, I'll, I'll make my coleslaw dressing with buttermilk. It's really good. And we're going to put about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. half a teaspoon of salt and I put a little bit of sugar in here now if you want to use a sugar substitute that's what I'm doing today I'm using monk fruit and I'm gonna put a pretty good tablespoon maybe a tablespoon and a half and then I'm going to take a little bit of white wine vinegar not very much About a teaspoon. And that's that's my dressing. It's just that simple, that easy. Not a lot of ingredients. It comes together really fast. I know a lot of y'all can't use sugar, so a sugar substitute works really well. So this was a large carrot and a half of a medium size cabbage head. Now if I was making this for a big group of people, I'd use a, a large cabbage head and probably a couple of carrots, large carrots. So I'm just gonna put my cabbage in my bowl. 
put my dressing in here. Now, sometimes if I'm taking this somewhere, a lot of people like to make it ahead of time and just let it sit in the fridge. Uh, but sometimes I like to just put my dressing in a in a jar, pint jar, put the lid on it, and I'll put it in a in a little cooler or something. I'll have my cabbage and my carrots, you know, chopped up in a bow with a lid on it. And then when I get to where I'm going, I will dress my coleslaw that way. Now, I like a lot of carrots in my coleslaw. You may not like that many. I'm gonna put just a little more pepper. And this is what you call your, just your regular old plain Jane Southern coleslaw. I'm gonna taste it. That's just all there is to it. This is delicious on a barbecue sandwich. Yep, just right. Sometimes I might even slice up a tomato or two out of the garden and just kind of put it on top or mix it in together. That makes it really good too. So there you go. There's Miss Lori's simple coleslaw recipe. So now let's check our sauerkraut and see how it's doing. Okay, so it's been several weeks since we've started our fermentation on our sauerkraut. We're going to take the lid off the crock. Whew. That is smelling pretty sour. I know I've had people email me and say, Miss Lori, I've been, uh, I think my sauerkraut's runt, and I'm trying to get them to explain to me why they think their sauerkraut is runt. Yeah, it's going to have a smell to it, that's for sure. I'm going to take the whites out of it. Can you smell it yet? It's still fermenting. I see it. <laughs> There's your cover leaf. I mean, you only want it, you want to check on it, because you only want it to sour to, to your taste not anybody else's. It needs to be to your taste of how sour that you want it. And I mean, I'm smelling it. Now there was some foam on top. No mold or nothing like that. But you know how cabbage has that kind of a, what would you call it? <laughs> and be nice about it. A stink. A stink. <laughs> kind of a, a pooty smell. No. Now that looks good. I'm going to get them down here so they can see this. Okay. Danny's going to kind of stir this around a little bit. And you can see that some of it has softened and then some of it is not ready yet. It's not all ready yet. But he's going to taste it. He's going to taste it and tell us if it's ready or if it needs to go just a little bit longer. Still crunchy. I got a big spice in there. It, uh, I think it's getting close, but it's going to have to go a little longer, I think. Before it gets sour enough for you. Yeah, it's not quite kraut. It's not quite quite kraut. So explain to them what you mean by that. Well, it just, I don't know how to explain it other than, you know, what kraut tastes like. And it's not there. It's a, but it is, it's a vinegar. It tastes got a bit of hint of vinegar. So it's got the taste, so it's fermenting because it does it's have, fermenting. That, it's got that taste of vinegar. We didn't put vinegar in it. So the fermentation is working. I just think it needs 
A more but pine. yeah, to be a sour. I think your cabbage will get a little, and it's going to get a little darker too. Yeah, it, the cabbage will get a little bit darker, like some of it already has, and it's going to sour up more. A lot of people like a really sour kraut, and we do too. So let me look and see what was the date because I wrote it down. I don't remember the date when we started this. Okay, it's only been about 11 days or so. It's been less, a little less than two weeks since we started our kraut. And we always let our kraut go at least four weeks up to six weeks. And usually at six weeks, I'm putting it in the refrigerator. Um, but this is fermenting. Like Mr. Brown said, you can taste the vinegar taste, but not sour. So... It's just not there yet, of course. So I put, I put it all back in here, and I put the leaves back in, and I put my weights back on there. So you can see the brine is is over everything again, and we're just gonna put the lid back on. I'm gonna put it back <coughs> over there on my counter, and that's just where it's gonna sit. Uh, every once in a while, you'll see a gnat <laughs> flying around it because gnats absolutely are attracted to vinegar and vinegar smell so if you're wanting to get rid of a bunch of gnats put you some vinegar in a bowl and they'll go right to it but anyways so if y'all started your your kraut with me or a little bit after you can see your your progress and like i said there was a little bit of foam on top but nothing to worry about there was absolutely no mold or nothing like that it is fermenting it's going through all them changes and it's all them bacterias and all them little uh, yeasty beasties, as we call them, they get in there, and that's what's good for your gut. So it's it's working and it's doing a good job. Is it microorganism? And <laughs> all them little all them little probiotics in there that like to get in your belly and straighten your belly out. So, anyways, so we checked it. We're at the about 11 day mark and so i hope that helped you a little bit some of y'all have uh, commented that uh, miss lord please help me because my i'm running my sauerkraut and i wish i could see your sauerkraut and see what you're talking about about it being runt because i'm not too sure that it's probably not runt uh, even if there's just a little mold on top you can take a spoon and you can get that little bit of mold off the top discard it and then uh, check the rest of your kraut out and if it's if it's looking good then your kraut's okay I mean I've had that happen before and just around the edge there might be a little, just a little bit of mold like just kind of floating around and I just took a spoon dipped it out threw it away and checked the rest of my kraut the rest of my kraut was wonderful so anyways uh, I know that most y'all probably know the difference if your kraut for some reason really is just something happened to it you're going to know it you're going to know by look and the smell you won't be able to handle it so we all know that sauerkraut does smell sour and does have that little bit of sour uh smell to it but i think y'all will know the difference between really rotten runt kraut and real sauerkraut you just feed it to me to let me see if, I, if it's rotten i let mr brown taste it first <laughs> but i any time that we've made homemade sauerkraut, we've never had any go bad. So, and it could be the fact that I always have so much in my kitchen uh, fermenting, like all my, my vinegars and stuff, homemade vinegars. So, all that is in the air already, and it's it's working here. It's anything that you're going to ferment, you know, even your sourdough. If, you, if you've got sourdough on your countertop and you're making some kind of sauerkraut or something all that all them little yeasty beasties that's in the air just floating around all them little it's it's just gonna it's gonna help anything that you're trying to ferment and danny's laughing at me <laughs> yeasty beasties but anyways i'm also i'm gonna get go to the refrigerator and i'm gonna get a jar of pickles out that's been fermenting it's just the way that i do pickles now i don't i don't can them up or anything as I get cucumbers, I put them in the jar, and uh, I do have a video, and I'll put that link below. A lot of y'all have already watched my refrigerator pickles, 
and uh, that's what I've been doing this summer too it's just refrigerator pickles and that's really the way that we prefer them they're fermented and just stuck in our refrigerator they're kind of like a bread and butter a lot of people don't like bread and butter but you can do your dill pickles that way too you don't have to can them if you eat your pickles really fast and you want them just so crispy and just taste so fresh just do the refrigerator recipe I think you really like it okay I got my pickles out of the refrigerator because I want to show y'all and like I said I'm gonna put the link down below for my refrigerator pickles and I told Danny I said uh, I didn't put as much sugar in these this year as two years ago when I made the big gallon jug it, it tasted more like your bread and butter this right here is going to be more of a deal. I didn't put as much sugar in it. But the reason that it's that color is because I put uh, I put some turmeric in it. And we all know that turmeric is good for you. So if y'all want, if you haven't seen this recipe, my video for this recipe, just go down to my description box below my videos. But I want to show y'all that these are still just as crisp. Uh, they've been in the refrigerator going on probably about three weeks and they are they're so crispy that's what not crispy but crisp did I say that right? <laughs> Rice Krispies? yeah but crisp. anyways I know what I mean sometimes I just don't <laughs> say what I mean I know what you mean they're crisp yeah they're crunchy crunchy you know how you get pickles sometimes they're like well, especially homemade pickles but these they're, they're, they've like, not they're been, like a noodle when you pull them out of the jar <laughs> yeah. these have not been processed that's what I'm trying to say they've just been in this jar fermenting for three weeks already and really good but I can go ahead and put the I want to try the onion in there I'm going to go ahead and put the recipe down in the description box again for y'all. You want to try an onion? I want to try the onion. These are so good on a hamburger. Yummy. So this is just two of the, two of the products that we ferment and that we eat. And it just takes, you know, a little bit of time for your fermenting process so I hope y'all try it what <laughs> did I say something wrong again <laughs> I get, no okay it's products products what I say I don't know <laughs> <laughs> I've been eating too much ferment <laughs> food today I'm getting drunk on it I guess no but anyways uh, yeah there it is and I just want to get on here. We wanted to see the process, you know, see how the sauerkraut was doing. Y'all been wanting to see my coleslaw recipe, and I've been telling y'all it's about as easy as you can get, but it's what we like the best. So you can also ferment your pickles, and that's just another good thing for your gut, and uh, it's just a wonderful thing to do. We are going to be doing our question and answer pretty soon, too. I'm still getting a bunch of questions. A lot of them are the same questions, but I've been writing them all down. We're going to get them all together. We're going to sit down. It might take us two hours, but we're just going to sit down and talk and answer your questions. And uh, Mr. Brown's getting tired of holding my, <laughs> holding my camera. And I, I'm just thinking about all the questions. I hope we have an answer. <laughs> we'll answer them as good as we can. Yep. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to freeze the other half of my cabbage. Now I just cut, it was half of the heads, and I cut that half in half. But I left the root on the end of it, just like this. And I just stuck it, and I've got another one right up here. And I could cut this shorter, but I'm not going to. So I got both of them vacuum sealed, just like that. My food saver. I use that thing a lot during garden season, especially. 
You can see how it gets all that air plumb out of there and then seals it up good. Now, the only way I can really use this and it really turn out good would be to put this cabbage in some soup or to, um, I can fry it up a little bit just like I would regular fried cabbage. Uh, it's not gonna be so good in something like uh, coleslaw or anything like that. It's just, once it thaws out, it's not it's not gonna be good. Or I don't think it is. Uh, some people might use it, might say it's, it's just as good. Now I do know that there is freezer slaw, but that's got, you know, your vinegar and stuff in it. So I'm just, the only way I've ever used frozen cabbage was in soups and I might throw it in a skillet or something. Uh, I've even taken this out in my kraut, so you can do that too. So it's a good way if you're not wanting to ferment all of your cabbage or you don't want to can any of it, then this is a good way to, to do it. So I just want to show you all that because I know a lot of y'all ask questions about, you know, how I put a lot of my produce up, stuff out of the garden and all that stuff. So this is just another way to take care of your cabbage. So I've got some fresh peas green peas out of the garden and I've also Mr. Brown grew a bunch of really nice potatoes so we're gonna make us some cream peas and potatoes okay to start out making our cream peas and potatoes I'm just I've got I'm not gonna make a big pot it's just me and Danny so I'm just gonna do now this is how I, I blanched my peas as I you know harvested them and I just put them in a freezer bag. But I think for me and him, I'm just gonna do maybe just a cup, maybe two cups of peas. Just like that. And I've got some little new potatoes. Now you don't have to have the little bitty ones. You can just have whatever size you've got and just kind of cut them up a little bit. There's probably about eight little bitty potatoes. I'm just gonna put them in there. And I'm gonna cover this with water. I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper. Then I'm gonna turn this on medium high and I'm gonna let them boil. For just a little bit until they're to the peas the by the time that the potatoes are tender the peas will be tender too so we're just gonna let these cook a while till they get good and tender Okay, we're gonna finish making our cream cheese and potatoes. And um, my peas and potatoes are cooked. They cooked really well together. Um, they're both done. Both are tender. Um, some people put a little bit of sugar when they're boiling their peas. Um, my peas are sweet enough. They didn't need no sugar, so. I'm gonna put a tablespoon of butter. Now, onion's optional. If you don't want onion in it, I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of minced up onion and salt tight it just a little bit. Danny's mom, she was the one that uh, got me to making cream peas and potatoes because she made them a lot and I just loved them. I don't remember my grandma making cream peas and potatoes. If she did, I just don't remember, but I just remember Danny's mom doing it and I, and I just loved it. And she always had cornbread with them. So we're gonna have a little bit of cornbread with them too. I'm just gonna make it just a little pan of cornbread if y'all haven't seen my recipe for cornbread for two people, I just done that recently, and uh, I'll put that in the 
description box below too. It's just enough cornbread for two people and maybe just a little piece left to, to put in a glass of buttermilk the next day or something. So you don't really have a whole lot of waste or a bunch left over. Unless you're wanting to put some in the freezer for a light, maybe someday you're going to be making chicken and dressing or something. So to saute that for just a little bit till they start getting a little bit translucent. Okay, our onions have been cooking a little bit. They're starting to, uh, they're not getting translucent yet, but they're cooked. I'm going to add a good tablespoon of flour. I'm just going to stir this around. And we're going to let this cook for just a minute or two. Get that flour cooked. for all flour toast. Maybe put a little bit too much flour, but it'll be okay. Now I've got a cup of milk. Stir that around, get all the lumps out. Those onions are finished cooking up. Now even though I salted my peas and potatoes, I'm going to go ahead and salt my, my cream sauce. And some pepper. I'm going to pour my, my peas and potatoes in here. Stir them around this cream sauce. Now if you have to, you can pour just a little bit more milk in here. I think it's getting too thick. And I turned my Turn my stove off. I might add just a little bit more milk to it. It's already looking good. Okay, I added another half a cup of milk. And that's the way I like for it to look. It was just a little bit thick for me. Some good old cornbread with this. It's gonna be good. I'm gonna taste it. Yeah, them peas were plenty. Plenty sweet enough. I just got my burner back on for just just to kind of keep it warm through. It's delicious, just like I remember. I'm going to add me another dollop of butter right there to melt down in there in that cream sauce. I even add a little bit more pepper because we like quite a bit of pepper. So I've got my stove just barely, barely on. It's just at a real low simmer for just a few minutes. And 
And there is your old fashioned cream peas and potatoes. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed these recipes. Um, we're glad to, to be with y'all today. Y'all been wanting my, my coleslaw recipe. We need to check the kraut. We made some good old fashioned cream peas and potatoes. And we're fixing to sit down and eat some supper. So y'all have a wonderful weekend. Uh, next time we're with you, it's probably gonna be with the question and answer. So I hope y'all are ready for that one. It may be a long one. But I'm ready for it. So we'll keep see y'all in a few days. Uh, y'all be careful. Y'all have a wonderful start of the new week. And uh, just keep it going along, going along just strong as you are now. Don't worry about anything. God loves you. And we love you too.